Okay friends, so I've got a few scriptures laid out for us today and I'd like us to consider them, meditate on these scriptures when we're thinking about what's happening in our world today, especially in the USA right now with the elections and, and sometimes our own personal opinions can get in the way of what the Word of God is clearly telling us about how He governs the affairs of this world and how he installs leaders and he can also remove them so i have some scriptures today and i want us to go through them friends i've also got a few images i want to share with you and um, i hope that this video is a blessing to you so to begin with let's start with daniel chapter 7 and i want us to just listen to the lord's heart friends and to understand his mind how does he think what are his ways and how can we be better acquainted with how he does things friends my last message i did was a very short clip regarding to the elections here in the usa and what is going on there's a lot of confusion taking place there's allegations being made um and you know the rest you know exactly what i'm talking about Anyhow, without further ado, let's go. So Daniel chapter 7, let us begin. I have neighbours who are very noisy today, so I'm trying to drown out the sound. I've got all the doors closed, the windows closed, but I can still hear a lot of noise. Anyhow, let's read from verse 9. This is Daniel chapter 7. And this is a very prophetic scripture portion that I'm reading with you today, friends. So anyhow, I'm going to read from verse 9. But again, friends, with every scripture that I present to you, please would you do yourself a favor and read those verses in their context, meaning the chapter, the entire chapter, not just the verses. But of course, for the sake of time, let's see how long this video ends up being. I'm going to give you the verses that I've selected today with the Lord's help. Vision of the Ancient of Days, verse 9. I watched <clears throat> till thrones were put in place, and the Ancient of Days was seated. His garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head was like pure wool. His throne was a fiery flame, its wheels burning fire. A burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. A thousand thousands ministered to him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court was seated and the books were opened. Wow, what a marvellous scenery here, friends. Can you imagine? Verse 11, I watched then because of the sound of the pompous words which the horn was speaking. This horn here and this excerpt of scripture is regarding the one who many people refer to as the Antichrist. Okay, friends? Let's continue. I watched till the beast was slain <clears throat> excuse me and its body destroyed and given to the burning flame as for the rest of the beasts they had their dominion taken away these are rulers leaders so when we're thinking about the rulers and leaders of our world today friends there's coming a time where they're going to increase in such wickedness that they will set themselves up against the Lord against his land his city and his people that's how wicked times are going to get but let us be mindful of the word of God and what he says about it verse 12 as for the rest of the beasts they had their dominion taken away yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time verse 13 I was watching in the night visions and behold one like the son of man oh lord help me I don't want to cry again start again verse 30 I was watching in the night visions and behold one like the son of man coming with the clouds of heaven he came to the ancient of days and they brought him near before him focus friends my beloved friends focus 
Then to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples, nations and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away and his kingdom the one which shall not be destroyed. And friends, this is the kingdom that you and I are citizens of. So we don't worry about our citizenship in this earthly domain that we're living in right now. Whether it be America, the UK, the Middle East, whatever nation, in whatever part of this world. The Lord our God has delivered us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of the sun. In that kingdom there is light. There is a king and his name is Jesus Christ. We look forward to that day. And there's coming a time where all dominion will belong to him. That every people's nations and languages will serve him, friends. And his kingdom will be one that shall never be destroyed. 15. Listen. I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit within my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. I came near to one of those who stood by and asked him the truth of all this. So he told me and made known to me the interpretation of these things. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the interpretation. Holy Spirit, thank you for the angel. Those great beasts, verse 17, which are four, are four kings which arise out of the earth. But the saints of the Most High. Look at that, you guys. Isn't that amazing? But the saints of the Most High shall receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. You know where my mind goes to right now? The persecuted Christians in the world who are treated like... Reminds me of the persecuted church. How in this world they were treated so awful, tortured, persecuted, terrorized, killed, slaughtered. But this coming in time, they're going to receive the kingdom, you guys. All of us who believe in the Lord Jesus, who are grafted into the vine, which is Christ Jesus. Because without him, let's not forget, we can't do anything, friends. Verse 19, let's go on. Then I wish to know the truth about the fourth beast, which was different from all the others, exceedingly dreadful with its teeth of iron and its nails of bronze, which devoured broken pieces and trampled the residue with its feet and the ten horns which were on its head and the other horn which came up before which three fell, namely that horn which had eyes and a mouth which spake pompous words whose appearance was greater than his fellows. I was watching, verse 21, and the same horn was making war against the saints. That's us, you guys. And prevailing against them until, only for a season he does that, remember. Until, verse 22, the Ancient of Days came and a judgment was made in favour of the saints of the Most High. And the time came for the saints to possess the kingdom. Thus he said, verse 23, the fourth beast shall be a fourth kingdom on earth. We shall be different from all other kingdoms and shall devour the whole earth, trample it and break it in pieces. The ten horns are ten kings who shall arise from this kingdom and another shall arise after them. He shall be different from the first ones. He shall subdue three kings. He shall speak pompous words against the Most High, shall persecute the saints of the Most High and shall intend to change times and law. Then the saints shall be given into his hand for a time and times and a half a time. Listen to this. 
but the court shall be seated and they shall take away his dominion to consume and destroy it forever. Then the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdoms under the whole heaven shall be given to the people, the saints of the Most High. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and all dominions shall serve and obey him. Take that, Satan. This is the end of the account. As for me, Daniel, my thoughts greatly troubled me and my countenance changed, but I kept the matter in my heart. Moving on. How glorious is that? It's so clear, friends, that the Lord understands perfectly well what's happening in our world today. He's decreed it, he controls, he permits, he allows. Friends, we just, we can't comprehend the ways of the Lord always, you know, we, we just can't. Proverbs chapter 24, I'm going to scroll down to verse 21. My son, fear the Lord and the King. Do not associate with those given to change, for their calamity will rise suddenly. And who knows the ruin those two can bring? Words of wisdom from the book of Proverbs, friends. In the book of Titus, in the New Testament, in chapter 3. Look at the opening verses here, friends. Verse 1, remind them to be subject to rulers and authorities, to obey, to be ready for every good work, to speak evil of no one, to be peaceable, gentle, showing all humility to all men. Look at how amazing the word of God is, friends. There is no room for disobedience, unrest, protest acting provocatively friends there's no room for it in the kingdom and the question will come down to do we understand the kingdom let's repeat that verse 1 remind them to be subject to rulers and authorities to obey to be ready for every good work to speak evil of no one to be peaceable gentle showing all humility to all men for we ourselves were also once foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But, verse 4, but when the kindness and the love of God, our Saviour, toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, that having been justified by his grace, we should become heirs, heirs, you guys. We are joint heirs of Christ. Like it wasn't enough what he already did for us. That we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying that these things I want you to affirm constantly. That those who have believed in God should be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable to men. Read the whole chapter again friends in its context remember. Moving on. I also would like you to read Proverbs. I forgot to bring it up on the screen. Proverbs chapter 8 verse. 15 before we go over to Romans let me just grab my Bible and I'll read it to you from my Bible here the wonderful word of God you see if ever we're in doubt let's go straight to the word and understand his counsel seek his his counsel from the word Proverbs chapter 8 verse 15 says this by me kings reign and rulers decree justice by me princes rule and nobles all the judges of the earth i love those who love me and those who seek me diligently will find me everything is under the lord's absolute control friends in romans 13 which is the main portion of scripture which 
um, Paul clearly talks to us about how our response ought to be, what our conduct ought to be. Right, friends? Just checking everything's recording. Verse 1. Let every soul be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and the authorities that exist are appointed by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authority resists the ordinance of God, and those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Do you want to be unafraid of the authority? Do what is good, and you will have praise from the same. For he is God's minister to you for good. But if you do evil, be afraid. For he does not bear the sword in vain. For he is God's minister and avenger to execute wrath on him who practices evil. Therefore, you must be subject not only because of wrath, but also for conscience sake. For because of this, you also pay taxes. For they are God's ministers attending continually to this very thing. Render therefore to all their due, taxes to whom taxes are due, customs to whom customs, fear to whom fear, honour to whom honour. This is why the word of God is so superior to any other spiritual religious book out there in the world. Look at the wisdom here, the temperament, how the Holy Spirit is showing to us how the Lord our God wants us to behave. It's about behaviour, our character, how we um, present ourselves to the world. We are in this world, friends. Remember, the Lord Jesus himself didn't pray that the Father would take us out of the world. Remember? We have to be here until our, our the number of our days is over. Oh, no one anything except to love one another. For he who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not covet. And if there is any other commandment, are all summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law, regardless of who they belong to, the left or the right politically. It makes no difference to the Lord, you guys. It makes no difference. Read the whole chapter, please. Moving on. Daniel chapter 2. Another amazing scripture here. Now, particularly, where did I want to go in Daniel chapter 2, verse 21? Verse 21 says, <clears throat> very clearly, and of course you can read it in your own preferred translations, but in English it's perfectly clear. Let's read from verse 20 actually. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. I hope these scriptures, friends, encourage you and instill within you a greater faith in our God confidence assurance in him that he knows exactly what is going on in this world that we don't need to be caught unaware caught off guard in a state of confusion without answers the word of god has all the answers verse 21 and he changes the times and the seasons he removes kings and raises up kings he gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. Let the world be confused mess, but that's not us. Verse 22, he reveals deep and secret things. He knows what is in the darkness and light dwells with him. I thank you and praise you, O God of my fathers. You have given me wisdom and might and have made known to me what we asked of you. For you have made known to us the king's demand. Look at that. Amazing what happened with Daniel, how God used him. What a powerful testimony. Now, 2 Timothy chapter 1. Again, the word of God is so clear, friends. Our attitude, our behavior. Let us read from verse 6. Therefore, so Paul is writing to Timothy. He was a, a lot younger in his age, but he was given a great responsibility, friends. Verse 6, therefore I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, 
but of power and of love and of a sound mind or self-control, some versions say. Verse 8, Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began, but has now been revealed by the appearing of our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, to which I was appointed a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher of the Gentiles. For this reason I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. For I know whom I have believed, and am persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed to him until that day. In the same book, Second Timothy, this time we're going to go to chapter 3, friends. In fact, I think we should read this whole portion here. Are we in the last days, friends? Are we approaching the last days? Yeah, we are. The Word of God has told us what to expect. And listen to this. Verse 1. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. There you go. Things don't get better, they get worse. Verse 2, for men, it's like the cup of iniquity, you guys, you know? When that cup is full to overflowing, that's when the Lord is going to say, enough, that's it. His mercy, you guys, it does endure forever. His grace endures forever. His love endures forever. But the wickedness of the wicked is going to reach to such extremities, you guys. We ain't seen nothing yet. Let's read. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, absolute narcissistic, sociopathic society ten times worse without self-control brutal despisers of good traitors headstrong haughty lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God having a form of godliness but denying its power and from such people what do we do when we encounter such people outside in the world or within it says, and from such people turn away. For of this sort are those who creep into households and make captives of gullible women, loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as Jans and Jambres resisted Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds, disapproved concerning the faith but they will progress no further for their folly will be manifest to all as theirs also was but you verse 10 but you have carefully followed my doctrine manner of life purpose faith long suffering love perseverance persecutions afflictions which happened to me at antioch what persecutions I endured, and out of them all the Lord deliver me. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But you must continue in the things which you have learned and be assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Oh, don't you just love the word of God, you guys? Last verses here. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, 
thoroughly equipped for every good work. Amen, amen. So be it. Revelation, friends, chapter 12. I'm bringing this up because I want us to realize that when I say it's going to get worse, this is how worse it's going to get. Now a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a garland of twelve stars. Then being with child, she cried out in labor and in pain to give birth. And another sign appeared in heaven, behold a great fiery red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven diadems on his heads. His tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth, to devour her child as soon as it was born. She bore a male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up to God and his throne. Remember, friends, it's the dragon, the serpent, that deceives the nations. Why does he bother to do that? Because he opposes Christ and Christ's kingdom and the coming rule of all nations by him with his rod of iron. Satan wants to usurp the authority, the position of Christ. Verse 6, Then the woman fled into the wilderness, where she has a place prepared by God, that they should feed her there 1,260 days. Verse 7, And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail, nor was the place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth. And his angels were cast out with him. There are principalities, friends, that rule over nations, leaderships. These fleshly, physical leaders that we see, it's not just them doing it. There's things that are invisible to our eyes that have certain control, dominion over those leaders and those regions because these leaders open themselves up for that kind of manipulation by the darkness. Just how nation is blessed because they acknowledge the Lord God, there are also nations that are cursed and open themselves up to demonic influence. But in these nations are precious saints who believe in the Lord Jesus, are born again, who declare their testimony and yet they are persecuted, treated like absolute rubbish. The Lord is going to come, and that day of vindication is coming also, friends. Verse 10. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God. I want us to remember the kingdom, friends. When we look at our nations and the elections and what's going on here, the corruption in all nations, friends. All nations are guilty. All nations have a level of corruption, absolutely. When they're given that much power, of course there's corruption there, friends. But our God, our Christ, our Lord is returning and there's no kingdom like his. Remember to set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. And the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. This is yet to happen. Isn't this wonderful? For the accuser of our brethren, who accused them before our God day and night, has been cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to the death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you, having great wrath, because he knows that he has a short time. This is why things are just going to get worse. Because there's coming a time, friends, that this entity will be manifest, visible to all, and the open, blatant opponent, oppressor, persecutor of the church and Israel, and the arch enemy of Israel, Jerusalem. <clears throat> Please read the whole scripture in its context. I want to move on and I want to make this as short and sweet as possible in Revelation chapter 16. 
Friends, the Lord, this is what I'm saying. When we get upset, moved by what we see on the news, we need to remind ourselves we are not of this world and go back into the Word of God. In fact, the book of Revelation is wonderful to remind us of what's coming and how the Lord God will judge the earth, the wicked in it. Listen to this, the seven bowls. Verse 1. Let me get my cursor in the right place. Then I heard a loud voice from the temple saying to the seven angels, Go and pour out the bowls of the wrath of God on the earth. This is when the Lord God says, Enough. That's it. He's going to have the angels pour out the bowls of the wrath of God on the earth. The first bowl, verse 2. So the first went and poured out his bowl upon the earth, and a foul and loathsome sore came upon the men who had the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. You see, it's related to those who give allegiance, who worship the dragon and the beast, and receive the mark. God is furious with those people, friends. Furious. Verse 3. Then the second angel poured out his bowl on the sea, and it became blood as of a dead man, and every living creature in the sea died. God is doing this. You see? Third bowl. The waters turned to blood. Verse 4. Then the angel poured out his bowl on the rivers and springs of water, and they became blood. Verse 5. And I heard the angel of the waters. Look at that. The angel of the waters. Hmm. And I heard the angel of the waters saying, You are righteous, O Lord, the one who is and who was and who is to be, because you have judged these things. Why? For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and you have given them blood to drink, for it is their just due. This is why they declare how righteous he is. Why? Because with righteousness... He judges and makes war. Verse 7. And I heard another from the altar saying, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are your judgments. Friends, the leaders in our world today, they're not righteous, they're not just. Can we all agree on that? But the Lord is. And when he makes his judgments, they're perfectly perfect in righteousness. Verse 8, Then the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and power was given to him to scorch men with fire. Men were scorched with great heat, that they blasphemed the name of God. They didn't care. They still blasphemed his name. The men were scorched with great heat, and they blasphemed the name of God who has power over these plagues, and they did not repent and give him glory. Such is the cup of wickedness that's going to overflow. Verse 10, then the fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast. Also, friends, I just had a thought. Consider what took place when the Lord God delivered his people out from Egypt. The plagues. History is going to repeat itself, but on a massive scale. Let me repeat verse 10. Then the fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast and his kingdom became full of darkness, you see. And they gnawed their tongues because of the pain. They blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their, and their sores and did not repent of their deeds. They don't care. They know full well this is the God, the creator of heavens and the earth who is pouring out his wrath on us but they don't repent friends they blaspheme his name even more utter wickedness friends this is what i mean when i said things are going to get worse do you see why i say that verse 12 then the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river euphrates where's the location where's the location friends turkey iraq syria and its water was dried up so that the way of the kings from the east, east from the river Euphrates, might be prepared. Verse 13, And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. 
for they are spirits of demons performing signs which go out to the kings of the earth and the whole of the world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Verse 15. The words in red are what Jesus said. Behold, I am coming as a thief. Blessed is he who watches and keeps his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And they gathered them together to the place called in Hebrew Armageddon. Seventh bowl, verse 17. Then the seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air, and a loud voice came out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. And there were noises and thunderings and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such a mighty and great earthquake as has not occurred since men were on the earth. That's some earthquake coming, you guys. Now the great city was divided into three parts. Why? Because I believe Jerusalem, Israel, who is partaking of Mystery Babylon in Saudi Arabia location, is going to pay a price for this, friends. Now the great city was divided into three parts. You've got Egypt, Jordan already, and Israel aligning themselves with this Neom City project. It can't be a good thing, you guys. And great Babylon was remembered before God to give the cup, to give her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. Then every island fled away and the mountains were not found and great hail from heaven fell upon men, each hailstone weighing about the weight of a talon. Now how heavy is that, you guys? I don't know, but apparently it's like a rock, a heavy rock. Men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail since that plague was exceedingly great oh my Revelation 19 what do we have here Revelation 19 after these things I heard a loud voice of a great multitude in heaven saying hallelujah Salvation and glory and honour and power belong to the Lord our God. For true and righteous, look at that consistency. For true and righteous are his judgments. Now the atheists will say, oh how wicked is that? I mean he's going to, you know, judge the world and destroy things and you know, the wrath of God. I mean what is that? Where's the love of God? This is why we have to be born again. Spiritual things must be discerned spiritually, right? He is true, faithful and righteous. Only he is fit to judge the earth. Nobody else. Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. For true and righteous are his judgments because he has judged the great harlot who corrupted the earth with her fornication and he has avenged on her the blood of his servants shed by her. Again, they said, Alleluia. Her smoke rises up for ever and ever. And the twenty-four elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshipped God, who sat on the throne, saying, Amen, Alleluia. Then a voice came from the throne, saying, Praise our God, all you his servants, and those who fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, as the sound of many waters, and as the sound of mighty thundering, saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife has made herself ready. And to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright, for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. Please read the whole chapter to get the full context. You guys, I've got images up here of these rulers. And I have this image here. Why did the nations rage and the peoples plot in vain? You know where that's from. That is from Psalm 2. And that scripture reads, why did the nations rage? Ultimately, they're going to be against the anointed one, Christ Jesus. Because they're all setting up their own earthly kingdoms. Everybody's self-serving, friends. 
Why do the nations rage and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us burst their bonds apart and cast away their cords from us. The world hates Jesus. They hate everything to do with the true God and they hate those who follow him. All these leaders, I was looking and just thinking, Lord, what is going to become of these people? that are ruling and governing their citizens how many of them are corrupt how many of them truly worship the lord jesus they confess him they pay lip service right these islamic leaders and from malaysia pakistan turkey they have their own agenda to rule the world every leader wants to rule the world these guys are dead serious they want to bring back the caliphate but there's a problem. You've got the Arabs in the south who want their own Saudi Arabian kingdom. You've got the Emirates there. These are kings. They're, they're actual kings, you guys. And Israel is making alliances with them. Because they think it will bring prosperity and security. They're thinking, well, let's get along with them. Better off than getting along with Iran or Turkey. There's no chance they can make such a deal. All these people... What is going to become of them, friends? We know that the kingdom of Christ is coming. And he will judge the nations, the world, in righteousness. With truth. Because only he is righteous. Only he is the truth. The Lord Jesus is the only way, the only truth, the only life. Ain't nobody can come to the Father except through Jesus. None. They're making their own alliances, cutting these deals, thinking it's going to bring peace and stability in the region, friends. And ultimately, so many of these guys want nothing to do with Jesus. Abraham Accord, making their own covenant, which is not based on the Bible. What a perversion. All these leaders, you guys, are setting themselves up against the Lord. Now, I haven't got a picture of every single leader in the world. But is there a real righteous nation today that truly represents Christ? Going back to this image here, Macron, is he representing Christ? No, he's a secularist, right? He's standing up for his freedoms and liberties and thinks he's speaking up for the rest of Europe. And I think it's too late for Europe, it's too late for the West. They muzzled. Christ Jesus from the Christians they made fun of Jesus they made a mockery of him on their media shows on their entertainment shows they have a problem with preachers who preach the gospel of Christ in streets right they have a problem why because they're coming against this kingdom that is coming the kingdom of Christ is coming you guys he's coming and what a glorious day that would be it's so glorious. It's happening. It's already a done deal according to the book of Revelation. It's done. He's declared everything to us. Everything that we need to know, friends, is written in that word. In the book of Revelation regarding the end times. When this creature is thrown out of heaven, then it's going to get nasty. But his doom is coming also. I don't want to leave you with that frightful sight. I want to leave you with this picture of a little child. So we can remain innocent as doves, gentle, looking toward our Lord, praying to the Father, asking for his kingdom to come. Jesus is Lord. Philippians chapter 2 says that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Glory, honor, power, majesty belong to you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I pray this message was a blessing to you, friends. That is the perspective. That is the perspective that we need to have, friends. His kingdom is coming. The Lord Jesus is coming. And we look forward to his return. Please share this message and I'll be back again soon with more Bible 
I want to focus more on the Word of God. And occasionally, maybe once a week, I'll give a prophetic news update because it's important to be watchful, vigilant about the times we're living in. But primarily, I want to really share more of the scriptures with you, friends, and I'm so looking forward to doing that. I hope you liked this. Please share it, and I'll speak to you again soon. Have a lovely weekend.